I'm Alan Taylor. My buddy Scott Duffy and I are in search of the best burger in America. Each month we visit a new city to try some of the top restaurants, pubs, and brew houses while sitting down for a candid conversation with some of the top entrepreneurs, athletes, entertainers, and celebrities. I don't know about you, but I love talking business over a burger. Welcome to Business and Burgers. Today we're back at the historic Barney's Beanery in Los Angeles, California. Joining us is an entrepreneur who went from guarding the front door at extravagant parties to throwing them. Steve Sims is the founder of The Bluefish, a luxury concierge service known for arranging whatever his client desires. From a trip to the International Space Station to Oscar parties with Sir Elton John, Scott and I look forward to picking Steve's brain, but first we have a little friendly competition to see who pays the bill. Boys. Oh, here he is at the last shot. That's my the guy. Game, right? <laughs> so I'm in traffic, traffic. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. So how, are you, right, so you playing up? I'm at my last shot. So how if I do? win, he pays. I'm going to let you take oh, my hey, shot. Just if you want to warm up, you could start by knocking these two in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold still. Last hold still. try wants to know. Ah, there victory, you go. Victory, victory, yeah. victory, 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 victory. What you doing to me? <laughs> Thank you. Had to be done. Now, you know what? Done. We got to play one little game here because you got to tell him your history because there's so much history. Where do I start? Um, I am the modern day Wizard of Oz, uh, but I charge well for my services. So oh, a few things I've done. I've sent people down to the Titanic. Got a client married in the Vatican by the Pope. Arranged a lunch with Donald Trump and his family, uh, pre-presidential. Worked for Trump for a few years doing events with him and uh, a little venture capital guy called Michael Milken. So basically I just travel around the world, getting cool shit done for people that can afford it and dream it. Wow. Yep. Wow. Yep, that's what they pay me for. So how do you get into that? Do you know, it's funny because I actually, <laughs> and it's funny you chose this location because Many, many, many years ago, I'd have been on the guy on the door telling you you couldn't come in. That's, that's how I started. Um, and then I was- So you started like as a bouncer? I was a doorman. Yeah, I was a doorman. So I just started throwing the parties and I thought to myself, if I want to make money, get rich people to come. Sure. So I would only invite rich people to my parties. Okay. So I just became, before it was networking, I became a networker. I remember the first one, the guy came over to me and he went, you know, this is really good and you're really connected. I wasn't. And he turned around and, uh, is this me? You're up. And he turned around and he said, um, I want to go to Monaco for the Grand Prix. Can you help me out? And I went, certainly. I went back home to my apartment and tried to find out where the hell Monaco was. Huh. So that's, that's how it all started. And then I thought about- hey, Which is so funny because a lot of the times people will, if you don't know it or you don't think you have the resources or you don't, whatever you wait, right? I can't do it. Or they find an excuse why they can't move forward, right? I like to challenge mm. and, um, East London Irish boy. I always thought if I'm going to tell you I'm going to I'm going to do something, yeah. it's going to be done, nice. and uh, it just grew like that. And people don't pay me because I'm stunningly good looking. They pay me because I do. So I started going around to these banks, throwing these parties and trying to get them to sponsor it and bring big clients in, hoping that they would give me a job as a banker. Yeah, um, they you? did. Yeah, you? I know. I know. <laughs> it was it was totally delusional, but. That was what I was aiming for. Uh -huh. And so I ended up throwing all these parties. I knew all the biggest banks in Switzerland. None of them would employ me, but they would sponsor my parties because I knew how to throw an event. That's awesome. Um, and then they would challenge me with different, I want to go to this award show. I want to do this. I want to meet that rock star. I want to sing on stage with this. Yeah. And I would pull it off, still hoping I would get a job. And then eventually just realized, I already have a job. Wow. I've got a network. I've got clients. I've got a following. I got trust and credibility. And it was my wife that was the one that turned around and went, why are you looking for a job? You, you've got it, you're yeah. doing it. Yeah. And, it, and the good thing about it was because I was enjoying it, it wasn't a job. Yeah. So a lot of people that I know are great connectors. Mm -hmm. And they have a hell of a time monetizing being a connector. So they're introducing people they know, they're do, helping people do business deals. Everyone makes money except for them. Yeah, I've known, or, I know or, a lot of those. Right, or everyone has a good experience except for them. So the question I have is, how do you be an awesome connector, but also monetize it? I always felt that 
I had something. I had access. I had a phone number. I had someone you, you, you know you needed. So I remember what someone once said to me, a classic line, that one line that changes your life. If they don't pay, they don't pay attention. But I just thought to myself, you know, if you want something, sure, yeah. give me 10 grand. Mm -hmm. I'll go and make it happen. If it doesn't work, you get the 10 back. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. I wanted your early stage commitment. Mm. But I always had a very simple philosophy. I only, I only play with people I like. Yeah. Okay. So, Woo! what's wrong? It was a hard shot, all right? He's gone. <laughs> that was a wild shot, but it didn't stop me from finishing them off for a win. Victor, two games, you pay. And it's perfect timing because yeah. the burgers are here. Today we're trying Barney's Cali Burger. This all beef patty is topped with guac, bacon, and a scrumptious cheddar crisp that has jalapenos cooked right into it. The jalapeno really shines through, giving this burger a nice kick. This combination of salty, savory, and spicy flavors makes for a burger that is as delicious as it is unique. We'll be right back for these tasty burgers after a word from our sponsors. I'm Alan Taylor and this is Scott Duffy. We are Business and Burgers. We're here at Barney's Beanery. It's been here since 1920. And you know what? As old as this place is, we've got the newest technology from Samsung because we have to keep up with the latest gear. We do. And today we have the Samsung Galaxy Book running Windows 10 Professional. This is such an amazing mobile device to take on the road. And you and I, we're on the road. We are road Ooh. warriors. Are we on the road? With Samsung Flow technology, I can be using my Galaxy Book and I can also be using my smartphone and running Samsung Flow technology, here's what these devices will do. They'll auto-sync and push notifications in real time between one another. They'll automatically activate a hotspot so you're never without an internet connection. And like, think about that. Think about being on your two-in-one, you can't find a Wi-Fi, your phone knows that using Samsung Flow technology, and now you're always connected. You gotta love that. It's an amazing feature. The other thing I love is the Galaxy Book Pen. It's included with this device. And you don't have to charge it. You not only don't have to charge it, but this pen features tilt recognition technology, which makes it so much easier to write on your two-in-one device. And he takes a lot of notes. I take a lot of notes. Yeah. Not only does the Samsung Galaxy Book ship with Windows 10 Pro, it's fast charging, has a full day battery, is powered by Intel Core i5 with a 12.1 inch AMO LED display, and has an expandable micro SD memory of up to 256 gigabytes. The new Galaxy Book with Windows 10 Pro is now available at SHI to order. SHI is the leader of information technology products and services. And don't forget about their Zero Touch program. If you are a company with multiple devices, open the box and the machine configures itself for you automatically. This includes data migration and remote support, making it easy to deploy and maintain your company's Windows 10 devices. Very sleek, very light. And you know what, Scott? I think this is a real game changer. It is. So order today from SHI. Complete with a newly redesigned detachable backlit keyboard, a tilt recognition S Pen, and Windows 10 Pro, the Samsung Galaxy Book is designed to impress. Before you get too far into your burger, how did you become the world's largest and most recognized concierge service? Do you know, it started off small, you know, party planning, doing tiny little birthday parties for, you know, affluent families and doing, uh, um, doing travel. And as a traveler, there's nothing that I found any worse than you'd, you'd end up in, I don't know, Spain. And then you'd get back and then you'd get the guy at the bar turn around and go, are you in Spain? Did you go to that bar or did you go to the Gaudi Museum or did you see Picasso? And you came back and you were like, no, I didn't know it was there. And I hated FOMO. I hated that missing out of that. So we say now that we plan travel that you just happen to go on. So we provide you with all those opportunities so that when you get back, you haven't missed out on it. And it just, it just grew. That suddenly meant that we were thinking, well, hang on, if you're going to, if you're going to Venice, how can we make sure you get into the opera? If you're going to Florence, how can we make sure you get a midnight tour of David in the Academia? If you're going to Rome, how can we get you a private tour before it opens? You know, in the Vatican or yeah. So we just wanted to see how far we could push it. Mm. And the more we did, the more other doors opened up and we we're a no BS kind of crew. So if we contact you, you know, we're going to do it. You know, we're not giving you any fluff. We're going to ask for a freebie and it just grew. Have you seen these new? Uh... I was actually looking at it. I was trying to work out what it was. What is this? So this is the Samsung Galaxy Book. And I mean, this thing does everything that I need. Alan and I get to test a lot of, of computers, a lot of devices, smartphones, things like that. We got to stay up with the latest technology and the latest gear. And I used to bring like a big laptop with me, 
um, when I go and do our business and burgers episodes, but I always felt it was so distracting. Look at this, I can actually pop this off and use it as a tablet, or I can just do this, and what I'm gonna do during, during our meeting today is I'm gonna take notes. So the way this has been built, it's got amazing integration with uh, Microsoft Office tools like OneNote. So Steve, with all the success you've had, the world travel, how does the family deal with all this? My wife took over and became my, my, my partner, not only my, my wife, my girlfriend, my best friend, but she actually picked up all those elements that I'm not good at. And as the kids have actually grown up, they've got the perks of traveling around the world and you know, going to different events and things like that, but at the same time, I'm keen to show them behind the scenes of how we got there. So they don't just turn up and go, you know, I'm a little rich kid now, you know, I get to go and meet these famous people. They get to understand what it takes to get there because, you know, you get a little picture on Facegram of, you know, you walking down the red carpet, mm -hmm. but uh, people don't realize the miles it took to get you to that red carpet. You know, on those miles you're talking about, I'm sure you have a lot of lessons that perhaps some of them weren't such fun ones to learn. Do you have, I mean, those ones that have made you, defined you to who you are today? I mean, black yeah. t-shirt, Harley Davidson, you know? Yeah, um, growing up in London, I was a uh, black t-shirt and jeans and motorbike. And as I grew and became more successful monetarily, you kind of adapt and you, you change and you try to become someone that you know, you, you think people are taken more seriously. But I became someone I wasn't. I suddenly found that I was being dishonest with, with the only person that mattered, i.e. me. Hmm. So I wasn't me. Yeah. And while I had the money, I suddenly found that that was deteriorating because the clients that resonated with me just being me yeah. were now going away. Right. And so, and the people that I was getting to fill that gap financially were people that I didn't actually resonate with because they didn't know who I was. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a whiskey drinking bike boy. Yeah. Um, so Dude, one put day, it right there. <laughs> it's got to be done. And you know, the, the, the funny thing is, I've noticed this. A lot of people, when they get into an industry, yeah. there's a few mistakes they make. They get into the industry, then they try to look like that industry. So if they're in a rock mm. band, they get the tats, the hats, the glasses. If they're a Silicon Valley techie, they get the hoodie and the vans. And then what they try to do is they try to be unique. But before they actually assimilated to that industry, they were already unique. Mm. So. Luckily, I was young enough to realize that I was screwing up. I went back to the black t-shirt and bike, don't have a car, ride around on bikes. So I turn up to some of the richest, most powerful people in the world on a bike. If you like it, great. If it doesn't resonate with you, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah, I remember a time where um, I, it, was, it was when I did my first live national TV news show. And I remember that I was so nervous and I was so in my head, not necessarily about what it was I wanted to say and what I wanted to deliver, but how I should look and how yeah. I should act and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I remember our PR person came up to me and she said, you know, the world already has a Jack Welsh and an Oprah and every person that you can think of, you just have to be you. And the more authentic that you are as you, the more the world loves you and the more they want more. I'm curious, do you take kind of this opportunity to teach your kids how to be entrepreneurs? I do actually, I, I believe that, you know, learning math, learning English, learning science, getting your grades, learning how to drive a car, that's what other people teach your kids. That's why they go to school. Your job is to give them the cornerstones yeah. of how you interact, how you build relationships, what you stand for, what your morals are, what your values are. That foundation, that footing, that's what you need to do. That sounded like it was easy to do, but that's not an easy job. Right. How have you done that? Um, I keep them involved, and even I've, mm. I've, got, I've now got a 21, a 19, and a 12. But from the age of eight, I would be driving down the road, uh, taking the kids to school, and I would have a, a conference call. And I would have the conference call in the car, but I'd have the kids listening to it. And at the age of eight, I remember after the call, turning around to Henry and going, how'd I do there, Henry? Do you think the guy likes me? Yes, Dad, That's I think killer. he likes you. That's and awesome. just, just the principle, how did that go? You know, what was the underlying feeling, the reaction? What was your gut reaction to that? Steve, you know, I, I have a big problem and my wife and employees both complain. I don't know how to say no. How do you set the boundaries? Most entrepreneurs have uh, FOMO, you know, a fear of missing out. Right. Get a, get a deal, get an offer, get a proposal. And the first thing that comes out of mouth is, yes, I can do that. And then they go home and they go, Oh, shit crap, how am I going to do this? I've had those moments. I have undercharged clients. I have got into projects where I shouldn't have got into. You know, someone says, hey, I'd really like you to do this. Let me come back to you. Just 
get a pause on it. Let me come back to you. Let me consider what's going on. Let me look at that. Let whether, me evaluate. Whether you want to or not, instinctively, you you, you I have do. Built the you make that habit now. Yeah. To breathe on it. Uh, so you know, hey Steve, can can you get us doing this? Even if I've done it thirty times before, love it. Let me come back to you. All right. Let me ask you a question. It, this is for Alan. So, Steve can hook up anything. If there was one thing, one thing that he could hook up for you, that was just like top of the bucket list, what would that be? Wow. You know, I have a life that I've done a lot of things that the average person never gets a chance to do. So I don't know. Let me get back to you on that. <laughs> well played. How well played. I, can I tell you what I'd like to do? What would you like to Eat do? Eat the rest of this burger. <laughs> Steve has led a fascinating life full of adventures. His stories have left Scott and I with a lot to think about. Don't let money change who you are. Just be you. Take time to make sure the deal is right for you. Don't sign a deal right away. If they don't pay, they don't pay attention. Don't work for free. Check out more episodes of Business and Burgers and our B&B blog at our website, businessandburgers.com. And don't forget, visit Business and Burgers on Facebook and give us a big thumbs up. See you next time, right here on Business and Burgers.